Daz Studio is a character creation and posing software and is completely free to download and install. What Daz offers is a very quick and very easy way to dress and pose one or multiple characters. You will have the ability to customize almost anything, ranging from simulating fabric, applying makeup, and adjusting your character's expressions. However, although Daz Studio is free to install, the assets required to use it effectively are not. So if you want to use Daz to its full potential, you'll have to browse its asset store or seek out third-party alternatives. Luckily for you, Daz comes with several free starter packs, which offer surprisingly good value for a beginner or casual user. Now, the first thing you need to do is go to the Daz website and install the manager. Once it has installed, open it up. You will see three tabs, ready to download, ready to install, and installed. Go to the ready to download tab and find the Daz Studio Win64 bit and then press download. It will then move to your ready to install tab. Press the install button. Once it has installed, it will then move to your installed tab. You will also see several add-ons and starter packs. These are for the different generations of base character models. Daz names each generation Genesis. In late 2022, Daz released their new Genesis 9 character models, and these are now currently replacing the very popular Genesis 8 models. Since Genesis 8 was so popular, the majority of the content on the Daz store is still for that previous generation. So, I recommend you install the starter content packs for both Genesis 8 and Genesis 9. Now, let's launch Daz Studio. When you launch Daz for the first time, you will get a screen like this, which can be quite overwhelming for beginners as there are panels everywhere. So let's take a moment to organize these panels. The first thing I need you to do is go up to Window and go to Workspace. Make sure that Lock Docking and Undocking is unticked, as this will lock your UI and prevent you from customizing it. Now, let's take a look at our UI. The first thing you should do is remove the Tips panels, as we don't need them and they just take up space. To remove them, mouse over this section and click on this yellow rectangle. Then open all the visible panels and remove the tips. Now, let's start sorting our panels. Go to the right hand side, go to the top and select Scene. This acts like your outliner in Blender and will house all of our meshes and assets. Select Environments and drag that up slightly so Scene is at the bottom. This will make the Scene panel easier to select. Come down and take a look at the bottom right panels. Click on Face Transfer, right click and close this panel as it's for converting photographs and we won't be using it. Out of all the panels in this section, the most important ones are Posing, Shaping and Parameters. Because they're so important, we're going to move them over to the left side, so we'll have more space to view their contents. Click on Posing, left click, drag it over, and drop it onto the sidebar. Do the same for Shaping and Parameters. On the right, these button panels are not that important, so go to the Scene section, click on the yellow line, and drag this down so we have more working space. On the left, click on Parameters and drag it up the sidebar. Drag Shaping and Posing up as well so they sit underneath Parameters. Move the Install panel to the very bottom. Move the simulation settings to the top as it enables you to do fabric simulations. Put the content library above the starter content. Drag the render settings up to the top bar so it sits next to the render library. Now, we are pretty much done sorting our UI. Go back up to Window, go to Workspace, and switch on Lock Docking. To avoid losing this layout, in the Workspace menu, go to Save Layout and name this Personal Layout. If you want to load it, go to Select Layout, and it will appear at the bottom. Now, if you're a Blender user and you plan to use these two softwares together, you may have some trouble as Daz's keybinds are completely different to what you're used to. To fix this, we need to make some keybind changes. Go up to Windows, go to Workspace, and go to Customize. 
you will then get a menu with all of the keybind settings. Now it's a bit of a mess, so I'm going to show you how to make some simple quality of life changes. First, let's set DAS to use Blender's orbit controls. Go down to mouse button modifiers, where you will see orbit. Double click on that. It will say enter new shortcut. Press the middle mouse button. Go to the drop down menu and select pan, and then double click. Press shift, middle mouse button. You can now apply your settings. There are a couple of other keybind settings I would like you to change, which will improve your workflow. But the problem is that the settings menu is such a mess, it would take forever for me to explain. So what I'm going to do instead is export my current keybind settings and put them in a link down in the video description for you to download. When you have downloaded them, go to Import, set this menu to Actions, and then press OK. Open Avian's Personal Keybinds folder, and in there, you will see an XML file. Once they have loaded, click Apply, and then Accept. I haven't changed much. I've just made the keybinds more compatible with industry standard controls, which I'm more familiar with. And with that, this concludes my tutorial on installing and setting up DAS. If you're interested in learning how to use DAS Studio for posing and character creation, as well as learning how to import your custom DAS characters into Blender with posing and expression controls, I would recommend clicking on my playlist link and watching my tutorial series on character kitbashing. bashing.